Halo, nama saya Ifik Arifin. Nama saya Yuan Lenke. Kita berada di Technics by Inixindo. Halo Hans, uh, wie geht's oder how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, much too warm for winter. Yeah, no snow. No snow at all. Oh, oh the very, very high mountains, uh, higher than 2,000 meters, we have got snow, but much too little. That's a, that's a funny, yeah? that's a not normal, huh? actually. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's a climate change. Climate change, climate change. Yes, I'm sure. It's, uh, yeah. We we want to talk about your journey in 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 your working uh, time, uh, starting with it, uh, uh, when you was a student. What what did you study actually? I studied uh, mathematics and computer sciences uh, in the 1970s. Uh, where uh, computing became more and more important for the companies. Mm. And many companies had already computers, um, but uh, of course no PCs. There was the big, uh, the big sharp computing centers that was the usual structure there. And the, the workers, the employees had terminals on their desks connected with the central computer. So everybody has a, a dumb terminal, we call it dumb terminal, because it has no no intelligence in, in that computer, right? You just... Yeah, only a terminal and a keyboard, that's it. Keyboard, that's it. So mm -hmm. you connect to, to, the, to, the, to the mainframe, something like that, yeah? To the, yeah. To the yeah, so you have got wires, wires all over the house uh, with, the, with all the terminals connected to the computing center. No Wi-Fi yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Just okay. And, and no, then, credit, and yeah. no credit terminals. You could only type characters there. So characters, only characters, no graphic at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you, 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 are, you were working for for the software application, a development of software, or yes, I, after my um, after my exam at the university and a short period, a uh, few months where I worked in the university as an assistant, I joined an insurance company, an insurance company uh, that, um, that uh, soon needed to, um, to renew the complete applications because uh, the, there were about one million uh, records of customers which were stored on tape. On tape. <laughs> on tape. So imagine if the if you have a um, an application, say an evaluation about the average age or how many uh, clients you have got in in which age class, uh, or how many women or how many working people. You need to sequentially read all the tapes, one million records, in wow. order to, to collect the statistics. And the biggest change in application was the change to a database, where you could quickly access, and which was, of course, much quicker. Because if you want to find out the red-eyed Catholics, it's much very cumbersome to read one million records from tapes to find the, these Catholics. <laughs> one by one, step sequence. One by one. That's how I uh, came um, acquainted with database technology from the very practical side. Yeah. And um, after a couple of years in that insurance company, I changed to uh, Siemens, Siemens. Um, to the uh, to a research department where that focused on um, database technology. Okay. So, so yeah. that's the logical path why I came to uh, to database technology. Yeah, yeah. You want to uh, to make everything faster than it was, right? So the access of the data should be faster with the database. And easier because if you write an 
application and you can ask the database for the red-eyed Catholics, then you have got a, a lot of, uh, yeah, you have it much easier to, to make your program. What, uh, what will you do with those people uh, rather than focusing on how can I extract them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, how, what is the name of the database at that time? Is this the relational already or still? Uh, it's of relational. It was called CSAM. Uh, but it was uh, pretty close to a relational database. It was like one huge table, yeah. but only one table. So you had to find um, a form. Uh, um, um, a f I think it would correspond to a third normal form in uh, in abstract um, terms. A data structure where everything is packed in one record. And that means that for a million records, in every record you have got a lot of um, columns or fields that are just empty. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because, for instance, if you have got a male client, then all the fields that deal with pregnancy um, are, of course, empty. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you um. use uh, uh, actually a SQL for, for that kind of operation already? Uh, and SQL not exists yet. Not that, no. No, 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 no. Now, SQL, uh, there, were, uh, there were specific uh, query functions uh, specific to such a database product. So for the CSAM, there was one, and uh, Siemens at that time also had a hierarchical database called UDS, Universal Database System, uh, with quite a different query language. Oh. And the of, of those query language and of course um, IBM had other databases so the differences of those query languages uh, caused of course a, a lack of, uh, of adaptability lab of how do you say uh, transport not transportability of applications and that was a, a major motivation for developing uh, um, structured query language as an international standard portability is the concept the desired ability was the portability of programs of applications i, th yeah. I think the first one was a system r right System R yeah. from IBM, right? Yeah. The relational system. Before Oracle yeah. come to play, eh? Before Oracle, yeah. Uh, well, did you have the IMS database as a uh, network database system before they came to System R? Mm. And then DB2 later. DB2, yeah, yeah, yeah. DB2. That's the one that still exists. Still, mm. still exists until now, DB2. Yeah. <laughs> focused on that conceptual data modeling as, a, as an abstraction layer, which would help to make the applications portable. So this is interesting, uh, Hans, uh, because um, nowadays we're still using SQL. I think it's, it's very, yeah, it's most of the databases are using SQL database and there are also no SQL database like MongoDB, but mm -hmm. What what do you uh, advise? I thought, what do you what do you think about the a development of application? Uh, is there any single database that you know the best one, or, or or can we can we use just the core of the SQL to be able to work with any database that exists? What do you think? What 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 is the best the best way to do for application? Um, stay on, well, stay on a on a database system, or we can we can say, hey, what what kind of uh, database system do you want to use? MySQL, or maybe uh, Oracle databases, or maybe a PostgreSQL. But but the application do not change yeah. much. Yeah. 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 Well, the the SQL standard was developed. Um, in order to enhance portability, every uh, every database product that that has SQL usually has the the, the core, the standard SQL, and has got um, extensions from that particular um, for that particular database product 
um, with higher level functions. And if you use the extensions to the standard, uh, then you destroy um, the ease of portability because if you need to change the database system, you need to care about those functions um, that were extensions. So the recommendation in terms of standardization and portability was to restrict yourself uh, to the core SQL and make perhaps a little bit more programming for, for extensions functions in order to remain with the core. Okay, okay. Just uh, uh, be aware that, you know, the extensions is not that good for portability, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, go on uh, to to the next level. Then you changed your work to to a different city or what, a different company. Yes, um, uh, well, it was all under the roof of Siemens company. There were a smaller company. I uh, then next I found a work in in Berlin, and that was a software company owned completely by Siemens, and uh, in that company. Uh, uh, I, I was a sub-project leader uh, or group leader, if you will, in a, in a uh, development project. That is, we developed a database management system for a completely new computer family. Mm -hmm. There was a cooperation project, uh, Siemens and Intel, and uh, we developed a completely new computer architecture with... Uh, with an um, operating system and among others database management system and um, some features of um, that have remained the whole project um, did not succeed there was no commercial outcome of it oh, uh, okay. but uh, the technology we developed is still present that was one thing uh, the the lightweight processes or called threads, threads. Uh, process change was a very important concept uh, another thing i remember is the the whole the system was developed in a high level uh, programming language mm -hmm. formerly the operating system were always programmed with assembly language but in that project we used ada ada, ADA yeah. uh, yeah, as a high-level project programming language for all the software, for all the uh, database software, also for the operating system software. Nowadays, uh, there's no question that um, database or um, system functions are programmed um, in C language or so, or in Python or, yeah. yeah so, but that time, that was a radical change. Mm -hmm. And that was not yet from, uh, from Berlin. Uh, I moved back to Munich for a while and I went into uh, computer applications and uh, the associated uh, consulting for customers oh. to build application structures and support their business processes uh, with an appropriate landscape of, uh, of applications. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it became more and more obvious that it is better for companies to buy standard application software rather than develop their own software. I think the, uh, the switch to, to standard software, um, wherever it is possible, that switch uh, came uh, due to the fact that own software development and maintenance and you have to continue the development, it never ends, you know, uh, is on the long term uh, more expensive than, uh, than standard software. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so standard software is uh, preferable, yeah? Yeah, yeah that, uh, and they, that turned out to be so. Mm. Every company nearly uses SAP or, uh, or a counterpart of SAP for all its uh, commercial processes. Mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was my next focus, um, um, standard applications and, and consulting for various companies in various uh, branches. Yeah. So insurances have gotten 
quite different um, requirements uh, than, for instance, a, um, a public agency dealing with um, employment, um, uh, the Arbeitsvermittlung. Um, Arbeitsvermittlung, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, employment agency yeah, have quite different needs, for instance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and at that time, um, the the overall strategy of uh, Siemens changed such that um, every um, every group that had an application uh, that would be that could be sold um, internationally, not only in Germany, they had their their responsibility for their business worldwide. And uh, that's, that strategy contributed to the fact that I got then uh, work uh, on a system that could also be sold in Ukraine or in Turkey. And uh, that was one reason why I, I got some work uh, also abroad, not only in Germany. Yeah, right? Yes, yeah. very different. Mm -hmm. Where were you then? actually and uh, so my first um, my first long term um, work abroad was then uh, in 1999 uh, for the preparation of the switch to the year 2000 um, i then got the the responsibility uh, to as a project manager to do that for siemens in china in that China. Was in wow. China. Wow. Mm. So you have to move to China. <laughs> yeah, so I lived in China for a complete year. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the, the, the what, what we call the, the New Year's. Uh, 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 we are afraid that something bad happened if, uh, if it switches from the year 1999 to 2000, right? Yeah. Yes. Is, is, yeah. Anything is anything happened in China? At that time, uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but um, the situation was difficult because um, every every computer scientist, every manager knew already uh, one hundred years before that the year two thousand will happen, and everyone knew exactly at what point of time it will happen. However computer programmers over nearly 50 years um, wrote their programs such uh, that uh, the year was only a two-digit number. Right. So, um, most of the programs uh, were not uh, designed for the switch of the year 2000. Uh, many of the programs uh, were not documented adequately many of the programmers that had written the programs were already uh, out of work in, yeah. in old age scheme. So there was a lot of uncertainty which system, which application would, have, would uh, probably behave correctly when that switch occurs. Mm. Uh, okay, okay. And for instance, in one factory in, um, in China, uh, it, it was impossible to adapt um, to the switch fast enough, and they then made another solution. They they switched the clocks back, I think, for one or two years, so that all the all the systems uh, lived in a fictive world, so to say. Yeah, and but. But that means if you produce a telephone and then the system um, ejects a production date of uh, 1999, uh, month of March, you must know, no, in reality this is already 2000 and you must um, build some working processes around to cover that error. Okay. Yeah. Was one extreme case how people manage to, to work around the, the error that they could not fix in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Many others, many others uh, choose uh, the solution just to buy new computers and uh, new software. 
to make sure uh, that they would not um, that Perfect. they would survive the switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why the, the change to to the year two thousand ultimately brought a big business and big additional turnover for the Siemens company. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how was it in in China? You have to work with uh, a, a team, uh, yeah. Chinese people. Yes, right. And you you have to lead them. And uh, how was the communication? How was the, the the interaction between you and the and the employees of the company? Was it uh, easy? No. We were a small team of uh, of Europeans, mostly Germans, uh, that directed, so to say, um, a team that was that grew larger and larger over the months to to do the step. There was a there was a prescribed um, worldwide strategy, um, and there was a uh, a strategy group in Germany that worked on the overall pro uh, project strategy and their details. They say, well, what do you need to do in order to make the change? First, you have to analyze which applications have you got, which computers have you got, which customers have you got, and uh, what do you know about them and their adaptability uh, to the switch, and what, what are the risks? Because in legal terms, it is clear if a program behaves wrong, wrongly at the switch, then uh, the, if the product carries the Siemens logo, then the Siemens company is responsibility for the for the commercial damage caused by that. And um, so the the top management wanted to know what is our business risk with that if we leave everything with. So a lot of analysis went into the analysis of the business risks associated with all these computer systems mm. were there. Yeah. And uh, the next strategy was, of course, uh, what can we do inside the company or also on the side of our customers uh, to remove the risk. New programming, new computers, new software, uh, whatever, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, yeah. It, it was complicated, yeah? Complicated. It was complicated, and um, it became more complicated by, by influences such as there were, for instance, computer tomographs in the, in the medical sector, oh. uh, computer tomographs that had not been bought directly from Siemens in China, but they had been imported from somewhere as uh, already used, maybe from Canada, and there were such systems in some um, um, hospitals in China that Siemens China did not know of. <laughs> now, the situation is if that such a tomograph uh, produces uh, something wrong, uh, Siemens is still responsible because it carries the Siemens logo, but Siemens did the Although it is an add-ons product, right? Yes. So, uh, right. Theoretically, Siemens could, of course, uh, write um, uh, advertisements in every Chinese newspaper and says, whoever has got a Siemens computer tomograph, uh, no matter where you have bought it, uh, please come to Siemens and uh, we will tell you what is wrong with it. Okay. Now that's a, that would be a bad ad advertisement that would remove the, the liability of course, but very bad for the company image. Yeah. So that they tried various different paths in order to find out uh, such products and contact to the, the owners um, directly. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> so, in the time, horrible. Did, did you know Chinese, uh, Hans? Yeah, yeah. When, so my personal experience was when I when I started to live there after a month, I thought, okay, if I have to be there for such long time and I have got all this, uh, uh, this Chinese-speaking environment, um, then it's very practical that I learned the, the language. And I started to learn Chinese uh, I think one month after I came there. So, 
Now you can read Chinese uh, characters also? Uh, uh, now I forgot it again, but um, I, I really studied Chinese intensively so that uh, after um, six to nine months I could already speak to some extent, direct taxi drivers and do some shoppings and so on. Yeah. Uh, um, travel. Uh, on my own without uh, the constant um, accompaniment of a Chinese person. And uh, uh, then I, I immediately started to, to learn the reading and writing. And I did this uh, for about five years and um, I managed Chinese quite well. But um, then my interest turned to different topics and um, then again, I, I lose it. I still can write the name in Chinese, so I write it on my calendar. Wow! <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, can you talk in Chinese a little bit now? Mm -hmm. Then later I had some, um, some acquaintances, Chinese, and I exchanged uh, Chinese emails with them. Uh, and uh, some, um, if I need an hour to produce a two-line uh, Chinese uh, email message, but nevertheless, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, computers have and computer applications uh, help a lot. So uh, the traditional way of learning Chinese is much more cumbersome than today, uh, because today we have got so many intelligent applications that help you to learn Chinese. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. and I have heard even that uh, that many Chinese people uh, uh, themselves are nearly unable to to write the symbols by hand because they all produce it by computers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I still learn by hand because this is the way how it goes into your brain when you <laughs> write characters by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It and uh, speak loud how it is pronounced, sh, and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jiao. You write the symbol and say Jiao in order to associate the sound and the picture in your brain. Okay. Can 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 you say as uh, I I I would like to eat in Chinese? Uh, what's yang chi? What's yang chi? What's yang chi? Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you like to eat in Chinese? Uh, what what kind of food do you like in, in there? Uh, very delicious is the the Beijing duck. Beijing duck. Which, wow. Yeah, duck which I get very rarely in in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, even yeah. in Indonesia, it's not easy to to find. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peking duck. Yeah, Peking duck. Yeah. Yeah, but otherwise the many dishes, uh, uh, fresh vegetables that they make in in woks, uh, like in Indonesia, is also quite delicious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you cook? Yes, I can. In Chinese. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I have a few Chinese recipes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> So, what, what do you think uh, for the young people if they want to to work abroad? Uh, what do we have to prepare, Hans? Something like what you did, what you did into to Russia, Ukraine, China. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for my long term stay in China, I I got a preparation uh, seminar paid by my Siemens company in order to get acquainted. Uh, with the difference in mentality. And I think that was a very good precondition. Mm. Um, when well, one of my first experience was when I when I got Chinese subordinates and so I there was one young woman and I gave her a task to do and um, uh, about three days uh, I did not hear anything any 
And then I asked, uh, how is your progress? And then she said, uh, I haven't yet started because I do not completely understand um, uh, what, what I should do. And that is a very different behavior of um, compared to Germany, because in Germany, uh, my subordinate would immediately say, now, okay, I will start, and then he will come back after that and say, I thought I could start, but still I have got questions, which, uh, and can we first talk about that, that I can really start. But that Chinese subordinate would not say anything, but would just keep quiet <laughs> until I ask for an intermediate result. Yeah. And so that's one thing where you have to deal with different mentality of people. Yeah. 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 I think they will change. I think with, with, with the time, modern time right now, yeah. you know, it will yeah. change. Yeah. yeah. And such experience you can only make abroad, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe in uh, if you go now to uh, to Spain, you will also find a different mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to learn your your environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the overall mentality with respect to the switch uh, to two thousand that I found in China uh, was oh well that is still half or. Uh, nine months from now, a problem that will come in nine months. Now, today I will care about uh, today's problems and in nine months I will care about the problems that will be then. But that was not uh, an adapt, uh, um, an allowable approach because uh, for that switch you really had to prepare. You could not wait until it happens. Yeah. And so part of the, the project management was also uh, educating the people that this is a problem where you could not just uh, sit it out and wait until it comes. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so the pro project management, um, or you have uh, also, uh, what kind of uh, um, uh, strategy do you, do you use to work together with the, with the local people? Yeah. Well, at that time I had to supervise the uh, the preparation um, of about uh, 45 sub companies in China. And in every such sub company, I uh, had to take care that they uh, create a project for that purpose, that they create their own project leaders that did the analysis and, um, and not decided on the necessary steps for their own company and for their own factory. And um, the overall strategy um, that was that came from Germany, so to say, and we had to adapt and, and disseminate the, the strategy over our Chinese uh, sub-companies. Okay. And we had to supervise it. And so, say, the overall uh, goal was by uh, May of 99, um, the, um, the analysis of the, of the problem should all be completed and documented in, in appropriate reports. So I had to drive them and say, can you finish with your analysis? Then the next, how much money is needed uh, in order to do the change? Uh, and what is the, uh, the potential business risk in terms of money if something goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Have you completed that analysis? And so I had to drive all the people and get the reports. And of course, I myself had to report the overall situation to the top management in Germany every week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah. busy. They keep you busy yeah, all the time. Yes, and uh, I always had to find the trade-off because on the one hand, it was necessary that I visit some places to, to look and to see uh, what is their situation and how is the progress, what people are, are really in that project team, have, you, have they got that project? On the other hand, if I travel too much around 45 um, companies, then I lose the overview uh, overall. So 
I had to find a balance. Therefore, I had some uh, some members in my team that I could send out, and uh, they would uh, help me on that. So you have to, to to go to the place. Yeah. So I decided, in some cases I go to the place so I get an impression of what goes on out there in the country, but. Um, then more I relied on my on my project members and let them go out and and bring back the the report of the situation. So how many cities do you know in in China, besides Beijing? China, in China I, I went to. In terms of I went to Nanjing, Shanghai, uh, Chengdu, Chengdu, Chengdu. And in the south, there was, uh, what was there in the south? The, no, that was an earlier work, no. Shanghai is in the south. There were some smaller cities, you know, uh, that I, I forgot how they are called. Well, we are, in a, we are in a situation where the use of PCs and mobile devices have become of utmost importance. Yeah. Uh, so, some uh, some point later when we had the the pcs on everybody's desk that was um, roughly spoken the uh, the the stage when i was busy working but nowadays um, the mobile devices the tablets and and smartphones have become much more important and uh, I already know of, of web interfaces that have designed that have been designed such that uh, they appear uniform on every device on PC on mobile on tablet and so forth. So that uh, that sort of flexibility um, is I think it's now already state of the art and that imposes of course um, important. Um, uh, requirements on application software development. Yeah, and, and it's again a form of portability or adaptability uh, when the when the hardware base uh, changes or when the hardware base becomes there is a, a, a richer variety of hardware bases than than before. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe, but if you compare. You have got a smartphone in your pocket with a computing power equivalent to a computing center in the in the 1980s. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> you carry it with you. <laughs> yeah. if, if you talk to the people uh, at that time, that uh, one day you will have uh, this kind of equipment in your pocket, and they will say you are a crazy man, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Hans, thank you very much for your um, um, uh, story. Uh, yes. It was, uh, very interesting, and it is a, 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 um, a piece of uh, history. Yeah, in computing. Yes. You yeah. can say. Yeah. 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 So um, um, I think the work uh, in other countries. Uh, we did not talk about Russia, but uh, that's not so important. But the uh, the experience in different countries is very rich, very rich, and uh, the open mindedness um, is a one good uh, precondition to be successful. Understanding that in every country the rules are different, and to learn how you can have progress and success under completely different rules right right but but now we talk about globalization right globalization means that uh, you should work with uh, each other from any other countries wherever you are and yeah this is already uh, a reality so yeah build a team that consists of people of everywhere uh, from yeah. anywhere in the yeah. world yeah, that's quite incredible. But, but now we already have a counter movement uh, because uh, autarky, autar autarky, how do you say, the self containedness or the possibility, um, no, uh, due to the war we have gotten, the new Cold War that, uh, that 
is splitting the, the commercial world in, in two. Yeah. Uh, we now say no, total globalization is bad because if it creates um, dependency in essential um, supplies, then we must get rid of it. And so that's uh, to a certain degree a step back of globalization, yeah. what we have. That's the current development. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's still something that we have to. We, we have two commercial blocks for another decade or so. That's my conviction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hans. Uh, at the end, we always uh, something like um, goodbye, but with uh, salam kompeten. We say that in Indonesian language. Can you say it? <laughs> Can you do it? Salam kompeten. Salam competence. Yes, okay. I think okay. one, three, we, 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 we make it together. Yes. Salam competence. Thank you. <laughs>